The following episode of the Maui Chamber of Commerce's Business Matters was originally broadcast on May 3rd, 2022. Aloha and welcome Maui to the Maui Chamber of Commerce's Business Matters Radio Show, sponsored by Mokulele Airlines. I'm your host, Pamela Tumbaugh, President of the Maui Chamber of Commerce. Today we're going to discuss the state budget and funding for Maui County, along with other bills and initiatives that will benefit Maui County businesses and long-term solutions for Access Deer. And we're going to speak with the head of Hawaii Tourism Association, HTA, and get an update on the visitor industry, the DMAP process, which is a multi-year plan, and his vision for a sustainable Hawaii. And we're going to meet with the owner of Maui Memories Photography. But first up, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to State Senator Lynn DeCoit. Lynn Pualani DeCoit was appointed by Governor David Ige on June 17, 2021, to fill the Hawaii State Senate District 7 vacancy. She previously served as a member of the Hawaii House of Representatives, representing District 13, and was serving her four-year term when appointed to the Senate seat. Lynn was born in Honolulu, but has lived on Molokai since she was four years old. She is a third-generation homestead farmer, where she and her husband have uh, raised three Uh, they've raised their children there and they've worked hard and they lived off the land. Lynn went to Molokai High School and then attended Molokai Community College. She's a devoted wife and proud mother of three children and one granddaughter. Lynn and her husband own and operate L&R Farms Enterprises, LLC, where they raise the famous Molokai sweet potato. Who doesn't love Molokai sweet potato? Good morning, Lynn. How are you today? Good morning, Pam. Doing really good. Oh, so glad to have you on the show again, and thank you so much for all of your tremendous work this session. Oh, thank you for the invite. Glad to be here. You know, uh, we're getting ready to end the session. We're at the tail end now. Can you let everybody know um, about uh, what our legislative team got done for Maui County this session? So, you know, our legislative team has been working on a lot of things. I mean, stemming from education, to infrastructure, to housing, to health centers. You know, we looked at bringing in a little over $273 million in a lot of these areas. I mean, much, much needed improvement for schools. Um, parts are big issues have always been every, uh, you know, making sure our teachers have been um, paid for what they're worth and the investment that we look forward to in our kids in the future generation. Yes. Along with the first um, many more improvements uh, that we've been faced with. Uh, jobs have been an issue, COVID. So it's just been a huge array of things. But I've been very blessed to work with a solid team on the Senate side as well as some of our counterparts or our counterparts on the House side. Well, you've had that long standing relationship with them, and you know, you've really built your own alliances there at the legislature. And, you know, it was great when you were then appointed by Governor Ige to be our senator. That was just so awesome. And (laughs) you have served us well throughout your long history at the legislature. You you know, I think having, you know, those that have been here for a while, Senator Algaron, Senator Baker, who's actually heading out for retirement this year, you know, uh, Rep. Yamashita, you know, they carry along with them long-term experience and knowledge. You know, I'm just impressed by the wealth of information that the, that the Senator Argarons and Senator Bakers have, and it has um, been beneficial for me. Uh, it's always been a learning curve, but I can tell you that working with them has made it uh, so much easier for us to bring home, you know, much needed funding to Maui County. So. I got to say, you know, we've always had our challenges with the healthcare system. Yes. You know, and there's constantly been a battle as we've seen us go through COVID. You know, we work right across the Queens Hospital, and it hasn't been a pleasant sight when we cannot have those services in Maui, uh, which is why we've constantly stood behind its healthcare system and improvements there, along with, of course, our improvements to Kahului Harbors and airports, the main entryway for our food. Uh, products and services that we bring in and making sure we have a safe area as you know we've been challenged with deer issues so 
um, you know, we've addressed that in our budgets right across the board and, of course, making sure county-wise we did not forget the islands of Lanai, Molokai, and, of course, isolated Hana yes. that has also faced with heavy rainfall this morning and road uh, washouts. I saw in the news, yeah, that a lot of work needed there. And again, you know, this is an ongoing challenge for Hana every time we have huge rains like this. And they're continuing for a few days, I saw. Yes, yeah, so of course, every year, as you guys know, we put huge uh, funds uh, into Hana, um, heavily used uh, by tourism. And of course, you know, I'm trying to manage that area, which is why I got to I gotta be blessed with Wainapanapa and its reservation system. Yeah, it has helped. It has helped to alleviate some of the traffic and also to focus on other areas that those that are being coming into and visiting can look at other areas of attraction at the same time being educated and being respectful of the local people that live there in Maui and not to just inundate them with tourists, but to give them education along the way so they realize when they come to Hawaii. They understand the dynamics of what our local residents are looking at yes. uh, versus having to deal with altercations along the way because they are not educated properly. And this is where HTA comes into play. And some of the things that I like to see with the HTA is more education mm-hmm. to them because, as you know, we depend on tourism. And at some point in time, we have to figure out what is capacity uh, because whether it be Farming that we do, we depend on tourism. Right. How much of it do we want or can we stand is a whole different uh, issue to deal with because our infrastructure, whether it be uh, coming into Hana, going into Kapalua and hosting huge uh, Sony Opens and golf tournaments, can really be impactful on a lot of the resources and infrastructure that we have there. So working with the Senate, uh, we have hoped that a lot of the things that we have infused is reflective of those issues as many of us make our way into our districts as often as we can or intake those phone calls to address many of the problems. And like always, we're, we're not going to make everybody happy, but we're going to do the best that we can in addressing these issues and trying to fund them as best as we can. It's, it's a big job, and, and people have said to me, and as we've been watching the legislative process this year, and people said, well, you know, what is the big targeted thing? And I said, the, the challenge is we're in triage. We're ha- you know, COVID yeah. really exacerbated the challenges, you know, that we, we had, but um, now we really shined a light on those. And I think the legislature has done an amazing job really looking at a lot of different pukas and trying to patch those holes and spread money around where we've gotten some federal money too, which is awesome. Lynn, what do you, you see? Know, I think we also oh, made go ahead. those changes too. You know, yeah. oh, sorry, Pam, but I think we also made a lot of good changes. I think, you know, through COVID, we were able to Zoom. Yes. Many of you that had to fly into Honolulu to do testimony and stuff, you know, we provided those, you know, some of the companies that are out there, they went hybrid. Uh, you know, it, it forced us to make those changes and to try to work accordingly, whether it be to come in an office, whether it be to just address those issues that way. But I think it helped us. I, I would wish we would be able to continue some of that because, as you know, flights in and out of Maui, Honolulu, Molokai, Lanai on issues that they want to testify on have been really painful, right. especially waiting in halls to 2 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, as we move forward, I hope to consider that going forward in, in next session. I hope so, too. I mean, I really think it's important. Um, we found a new way. It was a little different. The Senate would give us one minute. It was a little challenging. The House was a little broader. We appreciate that they give us a little more time to testify um, because that's sort of the whole point, right? We could always do written, but it's really yeah. that in-person testimony. It's really the legislators looking at somebody and seeing them and hearing their voice and hearing their heart, yeah. which comes across obviously very different on video than it does on paper. So we deeply appreciate that that's happening. And that's kind of, that's a great leading because that's one of the things I was going to ask a little bit about. Some of the broader um, initiatives and bills, you talked about some of them again, like health care and housing and schools, things that, you know, really were champion efforts that were maybe broader initiatives, maybe statewide, but are going to impact um, Maui County and every county. What are some of the things that really stand out for you? Oh, for me, it has to be by by far, uh, you know, DHHL. Uh, you know, as we saw the struggles of housing, uh, of, of P 
people trying to address that issue. Yes. You know, you're talking about just about a $1 billion commitment that we have out there just on on Hawaiian home, uh, affordable housing, um, education, uh, teacher compression. You know, all too often we, we always say, you know, we, we need to support our teachers. And I, I think we we have major uh, funding uh, infused either via bills, uh, be a budget, you know. I have to give credit to to both the Senate WAM chair and the finance chair. You know, they've worked tirelessly, effortlessly. Um, you know, for us, you know, big kudos to Senator Agaran, our representative Yamashita, as they both sit in two powerful positions as vice chairs of the money committees as well as the CIP chairs. Yes. You know, they've worked really hard to accommodate not just us, but across the state, because they have to also be able to turn away people that, you know, at some point they can make people happy and at some point they can piss them off. But, (laughs) you know, they have to think about the broader picture. Um, You know, we've had, um, look at what happened with OHA. Yes. Um, The pro rata share, you know, that is being considered. You're talking about retro of almost uh, $64 million in excess of... uh, you know, some of the infusion that we did even for for businesses. I mean, you take a look at 2021, and I do get it that it has been a challenge on the minimum wage bill, which is going to be a final vote today. But at the same time, we took the opportunity to make sure even the payouts back on the unemployment uh, loan that we did under ARPA. Uh, you know, we, we covered the six $700 million. Mm-hmm. We also had to pay back the $40 million in interest. Uh, we got the I- I- increase in the state tip credit mm-hmm. uh, starting from October 1st and going on. I mean, restaurants have been um, infused with the uh, restaurant card, mm-hmm. you know, at $50 million. So th- this is huge. Uh, I think this is about as diverse of a budget that we have before us as well as uh, funds that came in. So, And, and then the, the best part about a lot of these things is we took input from everybody. You know, we took a lot of input. We took a lot of consideration. I think, you know, trying to prioritize uh, where we're at and where we want to be and how do we try to mesh all this in with the rising cost of inflation. I, I think we did pretty good in, uh, in addressing it. But again, Pam, like I said, you know, we're not going to make everybody happy, but we're going to do the best that we can. Yeah, so it's, it's it really was a very tough legislative session. But... You know, and and some of the things, as you mentioned, minimum wage, businesses were saying we can pay an increase. It was just about to to what degree we can pay and and how far out it's spread. And I think at the end, you know, it, it was a great, it was a it was a hard fought <laughs> effort to to get a great compromise. But I think we've come up with a, a great compromise in the end, and excited to see that that's happening. And and like you said. In every session, we have challenges, but this was a, a big challenge coming. You know, again, we're still in COVID oh. times, and lots of things oh, need addressing. Was, yeah, it, you know, and for me, you know, as a farmer, we, we've had our challenges, Pam. You know, it's not easy to retain good workers. Yes. As I go out in the community, I hear it. You know, Jesus Christ, Lynn, we can't afford to live here in Hawaii. At the same time, you know, we got really creative during COVID. Uh, you know, we started to also... Uh, you know, mechanized in areas. Yes. You know, it, it hasn't been any good for a lot of us, too, as we, you know, many of us that actually own the companies were back on the line again. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not as if we were left. But, you know, we, we had to work later hours, uh, do creative types of marketing. Um, but from that, you know, we were able to then look back and say, you know, at this minimum wage increase, we see our families leave Hawaii, you know, and we have to think about in order for them to stay here, can we provide that? What can the state do in infusing these funds? I mean, even within the UI, you know, in the freeze that we look at doing for the next eight years, mm-hmm. um, literally based on that two-year look back, and you know that two-year look back wasn't so great. Right. So trying to just un- understand the dynamics of business, I think, is really challenging for most that seem to think because you're driving a car down the road, you must be making money. And that's <laughs> far from that's right. So some choose not to buy a new car or a new truck because they might be labeled as, hey, look, they got a new car to get plenty of money. That's not the case. 
you know, we are businesses that have also infused funds into our schools on shortfall of kids traveling for competition, yeah. science fairs, and so forth. So, so believe me, I get it. I get it. And I know um, at the same time, there are also other funding mechanisms, whether it be true ag, small business, um, those companies out there that truly believe in uh, ways to help incentivize Especially with farming and ranching, you know, you got farm service agency, you got transportation reimbursements, you got drought assistance. Um, I mean, there were a lot of things that were provided. Some of us had to take the initiative to reach out and grab it. PPP was huge, huge right. that kept making us afloat. So, you know, again, um, when opportunity knocks for for businesses or just anybody in general, sometimes you need to open that door. And you need to see what's on the other side of the door. And sometimes it might not be what you expect. <laughs> but I think what did it kill us made us a little stronger. And how we go about reaching out for help and assistance. And, you know, bringing those concerns to the ledge and say, okay, what about these? You know, give us the options and solutions. You know, and let's, like, work through it and have the uh, talk or kuka kuka on it. You know, it's, it's to come to something that we can live with and make sure Hawaii is truly Hawaii and we have the Aloha spirit. Absolutely, and and uh, the Aloha spirit is very important to us and, and very important to me these days with some of the messages that went out. But I do want to say, and I appreciate, you know, as you point out, we there were great compromises that were made. And, and there was a, you know, we had to look at a lot of things in balance, but there were great compromises and there were offsets like UI also helping the business community, which was tremendous. Um, and, and it's an exciting time because we're, we're looking at this and we're finding winning solutions and we're fixing a lot of things. And when it comes to, you know, our living wage, one of the key things, and I'm so appreciative with the work that was done this session on housing, because our living wage will continue to go up and our minimum wage will never keep up if we don't start addressing some of the infrastructure issues, including housing for, you know, um, our people. And so that's a huge thing. Uh, Lynn, I, I know we're getting close to our time, but I did want to, I know you've been a champion and we've got a huge issue on Maui, as you well know, and not just Maui, Molokai and Lanai. Um, you've been an advocate for addressing the access deer issue. Can t- you tell us about what uh, bills you were moving forward to help get this issue under control? And what do you see long term is needed to solve this challenge? So, so one thing I've done was I've had a lot of uh, great conversation here in Honolulu. Senate Bill 3179, which is the deer bill that we put down. You guys have heard it. We have heard it. Uh, access deer has ravaged many of our farms, our ranches, uh, created many accidents due to mismanagement or no management whatsoever of access deer. Uh, this bill actually infuses a little over a million dollars. It provides the LNR with the type of uh, machine, uh, equipment that they're going to need. It also incorporates with their a partnership or should I say working relationship with hunters that have been stepping up to the plate wanting to hunt and help uh, do some of the um, de-herding of these areas. It also does put a what you might call, consider a bounty. We call it a unit uh, to do a reimbursement. Those will have to be set on the rules by uh, DLNR. Again, as we've heard, many farmers and ranchers, you know, have issues with them. You know, this is a time when those that want to maybe offer up their services, you know, and at the same time, you know, those individual farms be a part of saying, okay, this is what (coughs) you're allowed to do. This is what you're not allowed to do. And if you you do not follow these rules in, I've given you an opportunity to help, but at the same time, if you break those rules, maybe you will not be able to come and participate because the biggest issue really is access, yeah. Right. So we've been working with DHHL uh, to make sure the bigger track areas, bigger landowners on Molokai, Molokai Ranch, um, commitment schools, private owners, private ranchers to say, hey, we got people who want to hunt, they're certified. This bill also calls for that individual to be licensed to hunt. Uh, and so forth. But, you know, this has to be a group effort uh, because when we had this issue two years ago, I introduced a bill to already look at managing. And I'll say it, I, I put it in there as eradication, but it also incorporated that of fire ants, 
pokey frogs and so forth, try to make the change and say, okay, let's uh, do it under management. We were hit with opposition here in this building, and we shut that whole project down. And two years later, the same people that came to say this is a bad bill, now is the people saying, what is the state doing? Well, the state has been working on this issue. We did not throw this to the curb. But when we hit with opposition, and then again, as you know, if we do not get people coming in to testify and saying, hey, we're having a problem, now we're with this bigger problem. And as you know, Pam, in the past year and a half, I have had to reach out to Governor Ige to, Im- to initiate an emergency proclamation, yes. uh, which allows us to get out there and get stuff done and overcome certain permits and things that we need to do. You know, deer that had um, gained access on Kaului Airport, come on now, you guys fly in and out. Yep, you guys know issue. what the impact. Yeah. One death on that runway is one too many. Yeah. So I, one, thank the governor for helping me with the emergency proclamation, but two, realize that my colleagues here in Honolulu truly understand, which is why they have given us great support behind this bill and the infusion of other monies within our state budget to help address the act this year. We just got to work together because it can't be just state. It needs to be state, county, private, and those that are willing to help. And we got to sit down and be willing to allow access in some of these areas. Um, yep. And if they can handle it, uh, within their ranches and so forth, then take care of it. Yeah. But the areas that cannot, that's open of those areas. So a focus will be one of those bigger tracts of areas. Oh, Lynn, I'm, I'm so sorry. We're gonna have we're gonna have to stop there. But <laughs> I'm so sorry. We're running a little over. <laughs> but thank you so much, and I definitely appreciate you getting the proclamation and working on it. And this happens often, in, in we've seen it over the years with deer that people you know are very concerned and they they don't want to see some of the management and and unfortunately the calling that needs to happen and then later when they realize how much it's grown they they suddenly say wait we need more of this so appreciate what you've been doing over the years and thank you for all your great service this session we appreciate you very much and appreciate you being on the show this morning Thanks, Pam. I appreciate you guys. You guys take care. Have a great day. You too. Aloha. And we'll be right back after a brief message from Mokalele Airlines. Mokalele Airlines operates the largest commuter airline hub in the country, right here in Kahului. Fly Mokalele from Kahului to Molokai, Manai, Hana, Waimea, Kona, and now Hilo. Mokalele also operates the only flights between Kapalua and Honolulu. There is never a middle seat on Mokulele, and every seat has a window and aisle. Visit MokuleleAirlines.com and take your next flight from the newly renovated Mokulele Terminal. And we're back. I would now like to welcome John DeFries, President and CEO of the Hawaii Tourism Authority. Born and raised in Waikiki, now living in Kona on Hawaii Island, John was raised by a family of elders steeped in Hawaiian culture. He has more than 40 years of professional experience in the tourism and resort development industries. Aloha and good morning, John. Good morning. Good morning. It's so great to have you on the show again. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a good time uh, to be reconnecting. It is. There has been so much going on, and we are in this great recovery period. I I understand spending in March 22 was higher than March 2019. Can you tell us what's going on now with this great rebound? Well, I think, you know, the um, Maui is just um, establishing some record average daily rates uh, that are through the ceiling. I think here to date, um, you are somewhere uh, in north of six hundred dollars. Wow! And um, as I look at the um, the forecasted number of air seats um, in there, it, it looks like uh, this rebound will sustain itself and get stronger as we move through the summer. And so things are looking good across Maui County in total. That's awesome. Really awesome. And I understand, I think I saw in the news, you know, a lot of people talk about visitor count, but it sounds like, you know, the numbers that HTA is looking at really is based on spending. You know, it is. And um, the I, I will say this, the per person per day spend 
uh, in 2021, if we go back uh, and compare the uh, January through the month of April, the per person per day spend was just shy of $162 per person per day. As compared to right now, you're at $234.40 per person. So that's roughly about a 44% jump in uh, that particular uh, statistic. So, and Ma- Maui is certainly setting the pace for the state. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, we, you know, we are deeply appreciative of that, um, you know, with the business community and, and of course, our community. I know that, um, and we're going to talk about that next, of, you know, resident uh, feelings about the visitor industry is also extremely important to us. And so I know there's a lot of work on that, but I really also want to, before going into that, thank HTA for the work that you've been doing because we've long said and we've long had a history of attracting a type of group that does spend more money here in Maui County and contributes back into our community. And so it's nice to see that's rebound. And, and again, it's very different from, I think, the march we were seeing in 2021. Yeah, no question. And and I think the, you know, there there's, everyone talks about the pent-up demand uh, in the markets. And what I'm sensing as well is there's a pent-up demand locally to get operational again. Right. And fully operational. And across the state, I know some of the challenges have to do with getting the adequate and qualified uh, staffing levels back to where they belong. But um, what will help that is to remain on a sustained trajectory um, toward a full recovery. And all indications are that we are well positioned to do that. That's awesome. That is what we like to hear. Um, and, and coupled with that, you have been, uh, through HTA, leading this destination management action plan process across all islands, and I say all islands because Maui County has three, <laughs> and each has their own DMAP. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the vision that you came up with for this, and tell us a little bit about how this multi-year plan will shift the way we're addressing tourism in Hawaii and working to improve resident sentiment? Sure. The Destination Management Action Plan, or DMAP, um, for Maui Nui, as you pointed out, uh, for each of the three islands uh, in Maui County, is really the offspring to a strategic plan that was adopted by the HTA board January of 2020 that established four pillars, natural resources, Hawaiian culture, community, and global branding. And um, around those pillars, these DMAPs, uh, and that process was an effort, is an effort, to give the community uh, a voice in defining what a sustainable model, what a regenerative model of tourism will look like going forward. And it was essential that, that a diverse circle of uh, community members who came together as a steering committee uh, was able to have civil and difficult discussions about what that vision might look like. Not surprisingly, a hotel general manager is going to see it very differently from a public school teacher. <laughs> um, and But it's, nonetheless, both voices are important. Yes. And uh, I cannot tell you how grateful I am for your leadership in particular, but also for the diverse group that came together on each of the islands in Maui County. Because that diversity... And, and disagreement, if you will, is really important to have a civil debate about what a future vision might look like. And believe me, on every island, uh, the best ideas come from the people of the community who have to live with some of the problems and challenges that have emerged as a result of tourism's growth over time. Yes. And so uh, DMAP will remain central. It's a three-year plan, and on most of the islands other than Oahu, we're now into year number two, 
And HDA's job is to make sure that the resources are brought to bear, the coordination with state and county lead agencies uh, is taking place, and we issue a quarterly update that is available on our website that outlines what has been uh, accomplished, what is in process, and some of the setbacks that we may occur from time to time. Yes, and while we're talking about that, because that's really important to me, you know, so many times we have these great planning efforts, and everybody says this plan is never going to be sitting on the shelf. And you folks in- implemented a quarterly process, which I believe is one of the keys <laughs> to ensuring that um, this is moving forward. And, and in this process, you have public briefings. These are these are briefings to show the county and the individuals who participated on the committee and who are working on different things and partnering. You're updating them on where we're at to date. Can you tell everybody where they can find that on your website? You know, if you uh, go to our website um, and, and on your search engine, just put a Hawaii Tourism Authority and it'll get you there. Uh, and you'll see a section there under DMAPs. And um, that menu will produce not only the DMAP for each of the islands, but also take you to uh, the quarterly updates. And uh, I'd encourage uh, the people of Maui County to do just that. You can only manage what you measure, and it's really important that we measure the progress we're making as well as the setbacks that we may occur from time to time. But uh, uh, all in all, I'm just really uh, excited by the the community um, members who are just extremely proactive on uh, ensuring that they're protecting a place that they love. Yes. And, you know, it, it, we've always been that community. I mean, not just here in Maui County, across Hawaii. We, we want to protect what we love and protect our home. And, um, you know, we, we, we've seen some challenges. And Hana was mentioned earlier by Senator Linda Coit. Of course, that's been a significant challenge. And over the years, some new things have come forward with the Wainapa Napa reg, uh, registration process, which has helped. But it's a great time for the public to get involved. And, and for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with the DMAP process, there were community meetings just uh, in addition to the DMAP group that people served on and I had the pleasure of serving on. And thank you, John, for that and for your team and all the great work you're doing. But there were community briefings and there still are ways for the community to ring in and share your thoughts. So definitely go online, look at the DMAP and look at the quarterly reports and see the progress being made because this is a plan that's not sitting on the shelf. And um, this is a plan that where feedback has been um, welcome. And again, so it's a place where you can look and see what's happening and we wanna encourage you to do that. Because the tracking, as John mentioned, you, 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 can, only, you can only make improvements based on what you measure. And of course, it's a new process. So I'm excited, though, to see what we're doing in Maui County. I wish I could say I'm up to date on all the statewide DMAPs, but I'm not. But you know, I'm I'm really excited by the progress I'm seeing here in Maui County. But that takes me sort of, John, to the next level because you've been involved in visioning for our visitor industry for years. But not just our visitor industry. I've been to conferences where you've talked about what's going on on Mauna Kea and you've talked about our culture and developing new industries. What do you see? What's your vision for a sustainable Hawaii moving forward? You know, it's a... um, um, Last evening we were at a um, reception commemorating uh, 75 years of service to the islands by United Airlines. Yes. And uh, when I started in the industry back in the 70s, United had 50% of the air capacity, lift capacity in the state of Hawaii. So it was clearly a, a dominant force. But I think being at that, at that reception and, and looking at it over in an extended span of time, um, you know, the... Well, what's clear is that uh, in 2019, when we exceeded the 10 million visitor arrival mark statewide, it was it was clear to most of us, and, and certainly members of the community, 
that we did not have the adequate systems in place to um, to manage the flow of visitors once they were on the ground. And so the congestion, the traffic, the lack of parking, um, these are chronic uh, complaints that emerge on every island. Yes. And, and what's what we're working on right now conceptually and doing it in tandem with other state agencies is taking the lessons we learned from safe travels, mm -hmm. especially with the digital infrastructure and some of the technological advances that can serve as vital tools uh, for us. And that is a, a way of getting real-time information so that the local resident and visitor can make real-time decisions. Hmm. If an area on Maui, for instance, a beach, is overcrowded, I don't, I don't really want to be a part of that overcrowdedness. But somebody's hmm. got to inform me right. about it. And so um, part of the, the vision for sustainability is going to require a new technological infrastructure. It's going to require the coordination between the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, um, our Enterprise Technology Service Agency, Department of Health. It needs to be a holistic system that enables us to provide, to communicate with visitors on uh, not only areas of interest that they may have, but a system that can provide information, education, uh, authentic Hawaiian cultural experiences, and um, transactional, so mm -hmm. that they can, in fact, get their reservation or pay their uh, their uh, fee if, if that's necessary, and do it in a way that's seamless, so that they're not having to go to every website individually to get this done. And so, uh, part of that future vision requires the implementation of technology that frankly is available and it just needs to be coordinated cross agency at both the state and county levels and uh, so we're in the early stages of doing that and taking the lessons we learned from safe travels and preparing ourselves for the next uh, emergency but more importantly preparing ourselves for a uh, sustainable tourism model that is um, facilitated with technological advances. That is really exciting to hear. <laughs> and again, any lessons that we learn from COVID <laughs> are helpful yeah. lessons. I mean, they were brutal, but but certainly helpful. But that's really exciting. Uh, you know, again, it sort of takes the next the next level on the the like Wainapa Napa system, but this takes it to a whole new level. I, I just even from infrastructure to, you know, roadways to beach management. Really thrilling. You know, Pam, the other thing I would add is that, um, you know, Hawaii's been in the tourism business for a century. Yes. And as a result, um, worldwide, it has become a lifestyle brand. Yes. And, um, and it's incumbent on HTA to find ways to promote locally made products uh, on an e-commerce platform or multiple e-commerce platforms mm -hmm. that enables a person in Europe to get their jams and jellies from HANA without maybe the opportunity of visiting at this particular time. So you've got people who come annually. You've got people who come every second or third year. But that in between time... Having Hawaii as part of their life, being able to buy a scarf, a purse, uh, products from Hawaii, um, is also important. And for us, it's a way of increasing tax revenue to the state without it being solely dependent on visitor arrivals. Yes. And, um, and it also stimulates small business and entrepreneurial opportunities that uh, can provide a first or second income stream for local families. And so, uh, you know, we're intent on creating a system that, uh, yes, provides information to 
visitors and local residents, but secondarily, we're looking strongly at how we go about promoting um, local products that people can buy uh, worldwide, and um, and that's exciting as well. Well, you know, you you know, you're singing my song because uh, as our community and the chamber and uh, the county of Maui and so many organizations come together to put on the annual Made in Maui County Festival the first weekend, Friday, Saturday of each November. And this year we're hoping to be live again. We were attracting 10,000 people. But going virtual made us uh, broaden that marketing. And we've sure. been building not only... Uh, buyers that are people who want to come for the products, which is super exciting, at worldwide and working with MVB <clears throat> on reaching out to their contacts in other countries to share what we're doing here on Maui with the festival, but also the wholesale buyers that are really interested in Hawaii products. So we're getting the people who love and, and either have come and cherish Hawaii or have never been and want to experience Hawaii, as well as these uh, wholesale buyers and distributors who see callings in their region for Hawaii products. And that's making a big shift. So we would love to partner with you on that. Uh, we've got a site that's up year-round promoting those products, not just during festival time, but we've got an online website, which is madeinmaicountyfestival.com. And there's others, Pop-Up Makeki and, and other amazing programs. So love to join you in that effort. And, and I appreciate that you're looking in that direction as well because there's a huge need. And we can do a great deal there. And, and one of the other things I do think we need to figure out, because we're in an island state, of course, it's going to be shipping. <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah. but collectively, we're going to have a better shot at that. Um, John, I have loved having you on the show as always. Thank you so much for your time this morning. And we look forward to it. We're going to schedule these updates more frequently. Well, I look forward to it. And believe me, I'm very grateful to be invited. And... Um, Keep going in the right direction, Molly. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. You All have right. a beautiful day. Ahoy ho. If you're just tuning in, this is Business Matters, brought to you by the Maui Chamber of Commerce. It is now my pleasure to welcome the owner of Maui Memories Photography, Beth Latte. Uh, aloha and good morning, Beth. How are you this morning? Good morning, Pam. I'm good. How are you? I am awesome. It's a little rainy, but we could use the rain. Yes, we definitely need it. <laughs> Where are you calling in from? Uh, Lahaina. Oh, okay. How's it in Lahaina? Uh, it's cloudy. Oh, so, but it's nice. <laughs> oh, good. Well, here in Wailuka, it's, it's it's raining, but wonderfully. Just not terribly. Just nice, nice little sprinkles throughout the morning. Tell us a little bit about Maui Memories Photography, Beth, and what inspired you to start this business? So back in 2019, my husband was having um, some health issues, and we were trying to figure out how to make him not so stressed, and I decided, let's start a photography business, and he looked at me, and he's like, he was like, you don't even know how to take photos, and... <laughs> Um, I was like, well, you know what? I have a feeling that this is going to work and we should do it. And he said, okay. He quit his job and he has, um, he handles most of the everyday business aspect of it, um, because of his health issues and stress. Yes. And it is honestly have really taken off. Um, and that's where it's gone. And we have started to expand into making, waterproof beach bags, and then also um, organic, all-natural uh, body butters. Wow. And so, yeah, we're expanding um, slowly, but, you know, trying to get uh, more broadened products out there. So let me, what, what did you do previously, and what did your husband do previously? Um, so I currently am still a pool server um, up in Kapalua, and then he, his previous life was a butcher. Okay, so now did you folks, was photography a hobby for you? Um, yeah, once we moved to the island, it kind of did become a hobby. I mean, okay. we have like the most beautiful place in the whole wide world. <laughs> yes. <not? laughs> well, when you mentioned he said you don't know how to take pictures, I thought, okay, but I... I, as somebody who, I'm no, I'm no uh, uh, photographer by any means, but it is one of the taking photographs of different things when I travel. But also, I, I love to take pictures of plants and beautiful gardens. It that's relaxing to me. 
So is is 100%. is he one of the photographers? Is he is that, that's how it's benefiting him in in terms of relaxing? Um, so in terms of relaxing, he actually enjoys really, um, engaging with all of our customers. Oh. So that's where, um, it comes into play for him. I actually do most of the shooting. He is starting to, um, get out there with the camera a little bit. Um, but he also does all the editing of all the photos. Oh, nice. So, yeah. So engaging with all of our customers and then also sitting in front of the computer and making the photograph actually come to life. That's what he really enjoys. That is awesome, and that is a great talent. And I would find—I think I would find that relaxing as well, and, yeah. cre- and very creative to do that part of it as well. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like his creativity is—is is, you know just coming out, which is awesome. And then, so from there, now you've developed these other products: waterproof beach bags and and uh, natural organic natural products. So tell us about those lines. Um, so the beach bags are 100% recyclable uh, water bottles, um, and we print, um, you know, uh, very like tropical themed um, images onto each of the bags, and then I hand make them. Um, and so they can be 100% customizable. So if there's a certain bag type that you're looking for, a certain size, you just let me know, and then I can make it to your specification so it, you're not locked into just whatever products that you see out um and like in like normal stores um and then for the body butters um you know i was just honestly sick and tired of buying products that don't have good chemicals in them and mm. things good for your skin um and so i started researching how to make my own lotions And actually, my dog was having some major skin allergies, and I put this body butter all over her skin, and it cleared up instantly. Um, And so I knew I was on to something. And then a guest at my hotel, uh, his wife was going through chemo and was having skin issues. And I said, you know what? I made this stuff. Let me give it to you. Let me bring it to you. Let me see. You know, let's just see if it works on her skin. What's the worst case scenario? It doesn't work. And he came back to me and he said, we put it on her back in 15 minutes. She felt 100% relief. Oh. And they come to me and they buy all sorts of products from me now. And they're, they're in California and they're, um, you know, giving my name out to all of their friends who have cancer that are in like these cancer groups together. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And so that's a body so, butter. Is that? That's a body butter. Yep. So and and tell us a little about about your excuse me a little bit about your photography products, as well. So the photography is all seascape landscape. Um, we like to really focus on trees in Maui because we have so many diverse trees here, um, and that's really what we focus on when it comes to uh, to all the photography. So. We have any, we have small little slate coasters that you can buy with our images on them. And then, you know, you can go up, you can buy something, you know, the size of a mural for your house. And we offer free shipping on all of our products. Wow. Um, and we try to be different. We, we really try to capture Maui in a different way than what you normally see when you go out to, like, the swap meet or some of the other craft fairs and looking at all the photographers out there. We try to be 100% different and capturing Maui in a different way, if that makes sense. I, I absolutely love that. That does make sense. And, <laughs> and it's <laughs> nice to know. So people can buy anything from smaller prints to large murals. What's, yes. Uh, what's the biggest size? Do you know what the biggest size is that you can offer? Uh, so the biggest size that we have done was 48 by 96. Wow. But, yeah, it was huge. But when you think about, as, as you were talking about this, I was just envisioning a wall in my home. And I was envisioning, again, when you talk about seascapes and landscapes and trees, those are nice wide pictures. So, mm-hmm. and, and so many people now are really going with natural photography as the major art in their households these days. Yes. 
And I just love that. I, I love that trend. And it, to me, it makes me feel like the, the outside is indoors. And if I can't see the ocean, I can see it in my living room if I'd like to. <laughs> right. I may not have that view, and, but. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, it you know, it gives that feeling of Maui being in your home. Like yes. you have these fond memories of being in Maui and you have that every day in your home when you're looking at our artwork. Yeah. That's so awesome. Well, tell people where they can find you, where you're located, and and how you uh, can be found on social media and your website, and if you have any specials going on. Okay, yeah. So um, right now you can find us um, in Kanapali in the um, craft fairs. Uh, We do Sunday at the Sheraton, Monday, Nenea, Wednesday, the Hanuakai, and then Saturday at the Western Resort and Spa. Um, and the hours are 9 to 3 for all of those days. Um, so if you're looking for us in person, that's where to find us. Um, you can always visit our website at Maui, M as in memories, photography.com. And then if you're looking um, on Instagram, you can find me. It's actually Liz with two Zs dot latte. <laughs> and that's where all the bags and the lotion and everything are on the Instagram. Well, I, I'm so excited to hear that you've created products that people just cherish. And to know that you're making a, a difference in the lives of cancer survivors is really amazing. You know, we, yeah. we're so glad to have you on and to learn all about the amazing things that you're doing. And more importantly, it's also exciting to know that you've created a business that works with your lifestyle and is helping your husband during this time of his health challenges. Yes, yes, 100%. That was the whole goal. Ah, oh, well, obviously you've done a great job and have, have certainly helped to achieve that. Yes. <laughs> Beth, thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning. Thank you for having me. It was, it was a pleasure. Oh, it's our pleasure. You have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Well, folks, I just want to tell you uh, the show goes quickly, but we always have a good time. Thank you for joining us this morning for Business Matters, sponsored by Mokulele Airlines. I'm Pamela Tumpot, president of the Maui Chamber of Commerce, wishing you blessings and best wishes for a beautiful Maui day.